by the Australian Percy Granger. Now, Percy was born in Melbourne. He's a Victorian. And am I right in saying that the cars here tell us of the place that Victoria is a garden state? Is that right? Is that right? Well, perhaps we could call it the country garden state because Percy Granger wrote a very famous piece of music called Country Garden. And my colleague, my fellow musician, Ian Robinson and I are going to play for you Percy Granger's Country Garden. Now remember, it's country gardens, so we'll have it quite quietly, and then we can build it up like the flowers blooming at the end of it. Right, Ian? That's right. right. He was the first person to write down Aboriginal music, <coughs> Australian Aboriginal music, and this has never been put into a book. But Percy Granger did this in 1909, listening to the Aboriginal singers. Now, when an Australian Aboriginal folk singer sings his tune, Actually, they always begin on a high note and then they come down. <coughs> and of course they have the didgeridoo. They have the, the, the big, long instrument, the didgeridoo, <coughs> which sounds in the bass like this. Now the singer sings some notes that are not on the piano at all. They're in between the cracks of the keys. So I show that by playing two notes like this, two or three notes, but they sound very strange. And that's the only way I can really try and show you how the Aboriginal people sing. So here is an Aboriginal tune written down by Percy Granger.
like the rain, like kind of rain music. Well, that was one thing that Percy did, that Percy Granger did, that nobody else had done before. Now, we've had the drum, and that's the beginning of music, because the drum is rhythm, and rhythm is music's heartbeat. For music to be alive, it's got to have a heartbeat. But there are other things in music too. There's a tune, and that's music's voice. And we've heard that Aboriginal tune, one of the oldest tunes in the world. But Percy Granger was also interested in music from other countries, and I have here some music which isn't yet published in a book. I'm preparing it, I'm editing it for publication. It's, it's called Beautiful Fresh Flower, and this is Chinese. Now, I've just been to China, and this, you see this badge here? You see that badge? That's all in Chinese. And it means that I am an honorary professor, teacher, at the Shanghai Conservatory of Music. That's a Chinese badge, and I was given that on my last day in China. And I played this lovely Chinese music of Percy Granger's. And the Chinese came up to me afterwards and they said, that music was so beautiful, it sounded like jade. You know, in China they have a beautiful stone, a light green stone called jade. I'll just play you this beautiful fresh flower of Percy Granger. Because the Chinese make the music out of the five black keys. Granger went to America and he met the American Indians. They have their music too. This bolo necktie that I'm wearing is a present to me from a Red Indian composer in America. This is the eagle. It's the sign of the sky. The American Indians always think in pictures. Rather like the Chinese do, in a way. For instance, when I was in China, I saw the sign on a banner for the Chinese people. And the, the, the sign for China, the Chinese, is like a sword. 
with a hilt, a little square, like a sword coming down. And the people is a big square with something like a tree inside the square, inside the frame. So I'm going to play you now some American Indian music, thinking of this present to me of this bolo necktie. I'm going to play you, first of all, an American Indian war dance, and then that will be followed by a peace song, the song of the bluebird.
Now that bluebird song, I think, sounds a little bit Scottish. This tune here. And it may be that the Scots <coughs> took that tune to America because Scotland was so poor Many people had to leave Scotland to go to other countries, Australia, America, Canada. And the Scots who went to America and other of these countries spoke the Scots Gaelic or Gaelic language, a very old language. But only 84,000 people now speak in Scotland. And they took that language to America and the American Indians actually used some of the Scots Gaelic or Gaelic language. For instance, the American Indian word for the sandal is moccasin and that is real Scots Gaelic or Gaelic. Moccasin in Scots means my feet. So that tune, that American Indian tune, may have been a Scottish Gaelic tune originally, which became an American Indian tune. Now, I mentioned that I was in China. The front three rows of my concerts, I played to a thousand people in Shanghai, big hall with a thousand people, and the front three rows were full of little children Students of music, little musicians, and the little girls wore a hairdo with coming like butterflies, mm. with, with black hair rings at the side. And when I played the piano, especially Percy Granger's music, I saw these little girls bobbing up and down to the rhythm. And they just looked like little butterflies, little yellow and black butterflies, mm. bobbing up and down. And I'll play you the music I played for them. Talking about Scotland, Percy Granger went to Scotland as well, and he loved Scotland, the mountains and the rivers and the dances, and he composed the Scott Strathspey and Reel. Now it's this lively music, this dance music, that I played in China, and I'm going to share it with you now.
I agree with you. Isn't that a terrific piece of music? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it marvellous? Yes. It's no wonder the little Chinese girl bobbed up and down to it. Now, talking about bobbing up and down, I lived in Africa, a long way from my home in Scotland, 6,000 miles away, and I sometimes thought about the village in Scotland where I live, especially in the summer when the little children in their kilts dance the Scottish dances with their arms raised up. You know, when they raise their arms, they're really showing a picture of the deer with their antlers. It's just like the bagpipes with all the, the pipes, all the, the drones, you know, those long sticks. Those are also like the deer's antlers. And I wrote a little piece of music myself, thinking of the Scottish dance of the children in West Linton, the village where I live. Now I think in the middle of this, you can, you can imagine that dance. This bit is in the middle. It starts like this. Then we have the bit with the, arm, with the arms up. Now, do you think you can remember that bit? Where they put their arms up? Do you think you can remember it? Will you? And when, and when you hear that bit, put your arms up when, when it comes. Now listen, this is the bit you've got to remember, this bit here. That's it. But you don't put your arms up when it's this bit. What? When it's this bit. Now listen, let's get it straight. Let's get it straight now. Look, you don't put your arms up when it's this bit. But you do when it's this bit. Because the black music, the ragtime, has mm. just got the right place, the same place in concerts as classical music. And in its way, it's its own classical music, a, a, another kind of classical music. Now, seeing that we're getting into our stride, yes, I want you to help me with this ragtime of Uvi Blake. This is called Chevy Chase. <laughs> is it? Yes, Chevy Chase. <laughs> right? Now, just. Ian, just listen to how it goes for a minute. Go on, go on.
music by the great Polish composer Chopin. We'll first of all have the waltz in C sharp minor. <laughs> Percy Granger played in his concert throughout the world, you see, the music of Chopin, Beethoven, and so much other music he played, you see. But when he was in the countryside, he collected folk music, because all great music has used folk music. For instance, Chopin, that great Polish composer, wrote mazurkas, which are Polish dances. The, the, the valse or waltz is a French dance, but the mazurka is a Polish dance. So I'll play you one of Chopin's Polish dance. 